Oh, I was very impressed um, with observing a group of people who were so talented, but also have had the courage to be themselves, even in a world that doesn't always accept them. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's very powerful and, and inspiring. And I feel like the type of stories I like to tell in, in some sense were about people who felt out of place, people who felt other. And so, well, you know, when I started working on things like Freaks and Geeks and, and Girls and The 40-Year-Old Virgin, I, I think I've always wanted to tell stories about people who want, want to fit in. So uh, I was really drawn to this material and all of these people uh, you know, for that reason. The first thing I ever directed in my career was an episode of The Larry Sanders Show, which was about Scott Thompson's character, uh, who was Hank's assistant. And he was gay and suing the show for being a hostile workplace because they made too many gay jokes around him. So that was the first thing I ever directed, and I worked a lot with Scott Thompson about how to approach that script. So it, it, it feels you know, full circle to get the opportunity to, to help get this together. I think the balance of comedy and, and drama and romance works when it's just organic. If you set up someone's problem, their resistance to relationships, why they've had problems, and then you just set up obstacles. The obstacles are usually funny. I mean, any bad date is funny. Any bad romantic uh, attempt that falls apart is funny. And I've always thought that you can be grounded and broad at the same time because people are really weird and people make giant mistakes and people are silly and you, you can be real and do stuff that's pretty outrageous. So I feel like when your heart's there the whole time, it, it really holds the romantic part of it together. I think the main thing is that you, Billy means it. You know, it's like a very heartfelt story and performance. Well, Billy had an idea of a type of person when he was writing uh, with Nick, uh, and we, we read a lot of people, and then you know Luke came in, and suddenly every single joke worked. You know, when it was the right person, just everything worked. I, it, it's it, it's hard to describe. It's just chemistry. You know, why are Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan amazing together? You, you can't really intellectualize it. It just all falls into place, and that's how it felt with Luke, and then I think it inspired Billy and Luke in rewriting the script and you know improvising, collaborating with Luke. Because when you have the right person, you get so excited, it just puts so much fuel in your tank. I think they wanted to have a moment where Billy would allow himself to be vulnerable and really tell his personal story and talk about his pain and his journey uh, you know, with Luke. And the real question was, how could you get to it? How long could you stop being funny for to truly open up? Because this is a thing that his characters are afraid to do, is to open up. He doesn't want to get hurt. And so it was, seemed like a very important scene. And when we shot it, it was on the first day of shooting, which is very unfair to Billy uh, to do it. There was a sex scene the first day and this long monologue. And it was much longer on the day. It was twice as long. You know, they found the best pieces and put it in the film, but it was vital to the story, and it's a lot of people's favorite part of the movie because uh, you know he reveals so much. Well, I think you know people are different and cultures are different, and you know how people connect. But to me, it's it's all the same thing. You have to put yourself out there. We're all terrified to do it. We're all terrified uh, to risk somebody hurting us, being abandoned or being left or broken. Or it's it's brutal. I mean, it's just it's hard to take those chances to hope to find the right person. So I always thought it was universal. I, I mean, some of the details of how you get there might be different of what the, the dating world is like and all of that. But I, I think, you know, the heart stuff, I, I think, is exactly the same. I, I did learn a, an enormous amount. I mean, we, it was years, you know, being educated uh, about all aspects of, uh, of the dating scene and, uh, but to me, I see myself in it because the idea, you know, for me as an older person, even thinking of being young and having to connect to people through apps and, you know, uh, going on Raya or, you know, uh, Tinder or Grindr, like, it sounds so terrifying to me. <laughs> you know, that I'm, I'm right there in the comedy of it. You know, just, just meeting people who you know is scary, much less 
strangers and trying to make connections or brief connections. It, it's all comedy and, it, and it's, it's all as terrifying as uh, I can imagine anything could be. Well, you know, he's, uh, you know, one of the great composers. You know, he did Hairspray. I, I know him from when I wrote a song with him and Adam McKay for the Oscars called uh, No One Likes Comedy at the Oscars, I believe was the name of the song that we wrote that Jack Black and Will Ferrell and John C. Riley sang one year. And he also scored uh, George of the Jungle, which my wife, Leslie Mann, starred in. So I, I, I'm well aware of his genius, and I think we were very lucky to, to get him on the project because that type of musical uh, support changes everything. It really you know, sets the mood, and it makes it a classic rom-com, and it, it's really, really, you know, a partner in every moment of the film.